I think a lot of you know me, but I'll quickly introduce myself. My name is Jewel, and yes, I'm married to Justin, that Justin right over there, Father Justin. Uh, you might know me best from my starring role in some of Justin's sermons. I've played a big part in a couple of them. Um, in addition to this important vocation, I also teach philosophy and religion at a couple of local colleges. And last fall, I had the privilege of meeting so many of you uh, when I taught a class about how to disagree virtuously. Now, don't worry, I don't want to talk to you about anything quite so heavy this morning. Instead, I want to talk about baking. Anyone here like to bake? Yeah. Uh, what about eating baked goods? Also yes? <laughs> I like baking almost as much as I enjoy eating the finished product, which is a lot. Muffins, breads, cakes, rolls, pastries, even cookies. Whatever it is, I'm all in. I can't claim to be an expert baker. In fact, my mom, who was here earlier today, can tell you that I tend to call her out of the blue with random baking questions. But even if I'm not an expert, I've spent enough years baking to learn some important lessons. And as it so happens, a lot of baking lessons turn out to be generally useful life lessons. Take patience, for example. You all know how much I love the virtues, but that doesn't make waiting for the dough to rise any easier. I'm very happy to knead the bread for however long a recipe wants, but just letting it sit there, doing nothing, such a challenge. But, you know, sometimes doing nothing is the best you can do, right? And if you don't let the dough rise enough, you'll end up regretting it, which usually is what happens when you act without patience. You end up regretting a lot of what you've done. Another life lesson I learned from baking involves looking at directions. No one will be surprised to hear that Justin very diligently follows whatever recipe he cooks with. I tend to freestyle a little bit more. Uh, but with baking, the difference between a tablespoon of salt and a teaspoon of salt can ruin an otherwise perfectly baked good. I've done that way too many times. Although salt is only one part of the recipe, right? Not following this specific direction, something as inconsequential as salt, can change the entire experience and leave you with quite a surprise. I think that one of the most important life lessons that I've learned from baking uh, doesn't come from the baking itself necessarily, but from the final product. No matter how much time I spend baking something, or how patient I am, or if I perfect the recipe, I can't hold on to my baked good forever. My success is fleeting. The cakes will go bad, the brownies will reach their expiration date, and the bread will need to go in the freezer. In time, I'll have to bake something new. Like so much else I do in my life, I can't stake any long-term happiness on something like a baked good, which is not meant to be long-lasting. In today's gospel lesson, we see what happens when we try to make something perishable, eternal. Just before our gospel picks up today, Jesus has performed probably one of his most famous miracles, feeding the 5,000. But very quickly, John tells us, the crowd moves from joy to anxiety. They don't want to lose the bread. They want to make something perishable, this food, stick around forever. But surprise, surprise, that's not what Jesus has in mind. Our reading then picks up the following day with whoever of the crowd happens to be left, and they're presumably hungry. So they go to Capernaum looking for Jesus. But when they find Jesus, he doesn't perform another miracle. In fact, he doesn't really seem interested in giving them bread at all. Instead, he tells them to stop working for food that perishes, but rather to work for food that endures for eternal life. Now, this is something we've probably all heard before and agree with, maybe. Your life shouldn't be about material things. Your phone, your computer, your awesome new pair of shoes. 
They're just things. You know the sayings, don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. You can't take it with you, etc. But Jesus isn't just talking about computers and shoes and phones here. Sure, they're definitely gonna turn to dust. Jesus has other finite things in mind as well. How much of what we seek in life is perishable? How often do we look for purpose in fading successes of this life? If I can just get the best grades, or go to the right school, or get the right job, marry the right person, then my life will be right, good, and happy, all of that. But all of these things are not what makes us who we are. And they won't last, not really. So what then should we seek? Food that is eternal. Thankfully, Jesus doesn't make us guess about what he means by that. He tells us pretty clearly when he says, I am the bread of life. All this time we spend searching for things that last, turns out God is that one dependable thing we can count on. Whenever we try to fill this longing with something else instead of God, we're destined to be disappointed because you just can't count on things that perish. I wish that my perfect muffins would stick around, but they won't last, especially with me and Justin eating them. Uh, the miracle bread that Jesus provides to the 5,000 gets eaten. You might get an F. You might lose your job. You might get divorced. We can't rely on these things. But we can rely on God. In fact, each time we approach this altar, we're reminded of God's eternal gift, the bread of life. Your being, your fulfillment, do not depend on what you can accomplish, but rather on God's infinite love. And this is good news, even for our relationship to the perishable things of the world. The cookies, the breads, the phones, the jobs, the houses, whatever. When your identity is no longer wrapped up in something that will fade, you can actually enjoy it for what it is. A temporary thing. You no longer need to cling to the security of the bread or the job or anything else. You don't need to hold on to something that won't last. Instead, you can turn to the one who infinitely gives and find something everlasting.